quick content note here before we begin this episode of What Am I Rolling? This episode's one-shot, Thousand Year Old Vampire, is an RPG described as a personal, challenging game for mature adults. Content warnings for this game include characters being injured, victimised, trapped or killed, the player's character murdering and victimising people of all walks of life, possibly including animals, loved ones, marginalised folk or themselves. There may be possible explorations of themes such as imperialism, colonialism or oppression. Characters may take part in drug abuse and or self-harm. There may also be mentions of illness, debilitation, body horror, memory loss and altering memories. This game is intentionally designed to be a solitary, reflective experience, one of which I really enjoyed and performed live for Dragon Meat 2020. But I appreciate that it might not be the best game to play or listen to if you're currently struggling. So, if you're not in the right headspace just now, please feel free to stop listening and come back if or when you're ready. Thanks for listening and stay safe, my friends. Welcome to What Am I Rolling, a twice-monthly RPG one-shot podcast, hosted by me, Fiona. This week, I am playing Thousand Year Old Vampire, a three-time Emmy award-winning solo RPG by Tim Hutchings, in which you chronicle the unlife of a vampire over the many centuries of their existence. So, this one-shot is a little bit different to our previous one-shots in that part one was actually streamed live as a part of Podcast Zone at Dragon Meat Online late last year. This episode's audio was taken from that live show and you can watch the original unedited stream on the What Am I Rolling YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it on the What Am I Rolling website and in this episode's show notes. As I go into quite a bit of detail about how to play Thousand Year Old Vampire in the stream, I won't do an overview here. The only thing to really know is that in order to get to the next prompt in the story, I have to roll a d10 and a d6, and then take the results of the d6 away from the d10 to get a number. And this number will indicate whether I go forward or backwards to get the next prompt. You can find out more information about Thousand Year Old Vampire and Tim Hutchings' other work on the official website. That's www thousandyearoldvampire.com I'll add links to it on the What Am I Rolling website and in this episode's show notes. One last thing before we begin. Naturally, there are times in this one shot where the players and myself, well, most of myself for this one, get the rules wrong or forget something plot-wise. Whilst we always endeavour to stick to the rules wherever possible, at the end of the day, we all make mistakes, and what matters most is that everyone enjoys themselves. So... With all that out of the way, let's play Thousand Year Old Vampire. Oh, hello, hello. Hopefully you can hear, you can see me. I've got my various people looking. Oh, I've got seven viewers. Oh, thanks for that, Charlotte. I was like, oh, so people are actually here. Um, let me get up my notes so I can see and let other people come in and stuff as well. Oh, just so I see myself there. That's quite scary. Okay, so hello, everyone, and welcome to What Am I Lo- Oh, What Am I Rolling? Welcome to What Am I Rolling Live. We are going to do a live stream of A Thousand Year Old Vampire, but I've got a few things to just do before we do some housekeeping and such. First of all, thank you. Thank you all for coming. I know, I appreciate it. It's past certainly my bedtime, and you're here with me till the midnight hour so thank you so much for that and you know thank you for dragon meat and and podcast uk podcast uk podcast zone uh for putting this all together and for asking me to do it i want to give a special shout out to my friend charlotte who's helping with the tech and she'll be popping in and out of the chats and stuff uh so say hi to charlotte while she's there she's an excellent excellent tech person so if you need any help uh, for your shows in the future give charlotte a quick uh, look um whilst we're here obviously we're still getting the stuff started so please 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 if you're really enjoying the show whatever share the link everywhere say hey this person's doing a solo actual play at night what 
uh, just you know share it so that more people can see it and do leave comments in the chat uh, spoiler alert i am not going to look at the chat <laughs> which i know sounds like what but we are doing a vod you're doing these things it's just because then i can focus on the game but please say how much you're enjoying it also if i get any of the rules wrong uh say it in the chat and i will look at it later because <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so, like I said, it's going to be an actual solo play with minimal audience interaction, which I know is different from other live streams of Thousand Year Old Vampire. But I thought, actually, I want to really do the sort of the experience of actually doing a solo RPG and actually speak my thoughts aloud and stuff and share them with you. So feel free to play along at home. Also, uh, Thousand Year Old Vampire, uh, there will be spoilers for it. Shock, I know. If you don't want to be spoiled or anything like that, so maybe the stream is not for you, so maybe go away and play it if you can, and then come back and watch the stream. But until then, I'm going to explain very quickly what Thousand Year Old Vampire is. So I'm going to show you my very beautiful, lovely physical copy that came in the post to me thanks to Third Space Gaming, uh, your friendly local game shop in Burnley, Northwest. Uh, thank you so much for that. I, it's the only place I could find in the UK that could ship it to me without extortionate shipping fees. <laughs> so this game is written by Tim Hutchings and it is a three-time any award-winning RPG about a lonely solo role-playing game in which you, the player, are chronicling the unlife of a vampire over many, many centuries of their existence, beginning with the loss of mortality and ending with the inevitable destruction. Ooh. The vampire will surprise you as they do things that are unexpected, unpleasant, and sometimes tragic. Uh, they make good churning decisions, performing inconcilable acts, and resolving difficult narrative threads in this game where you are exploring the vampire's human failings, villainous acts, and surprising victories. So the game itself is very straightforward. I'll do a few bit of a recap and stuff of the game mechanics, because I think those are always very important when you're doing these games. Essentially, you just roll some dice and answer the prompts that come up so we learn about the vampire's wants and needs and learn about what challenges they face and charted their decline over the years. So, like I said, I'm here till midnight, oh, um, but we might not make it to the end of this game. We might finish earlier, we might not finish at all. Um, so what I'm going to say, I'm going to just play straight throughout the two hours. If you need to, take your own bio breaks. You are in charge of your own bodies. And of course, if at times it gets too uh, overwhelming for you or anything like that, please, please, please take a pause and then come back when you're ready. Like I said, I will not be doing that because uh, I'm on a time limit. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do content warnings before we begin, because as some people may know, this game is got quite a lot of content things. Um, there are themes of death, selfishness and predation and predatory nature. Other possible themes that might come up, uh, characters may be injured, victimized, trapped or killed. Uh, the player's vampire uh, will be possibly murdering and victimizing people of all walks of life, possibly including animals, loved ones, uh, marginalized folk or even themselves. There may be exploration of themes such as imperialism, colonialism or oppression. Characters may take part in drug abuse or self-harm. Illness, body horror, loss of memory, alternate, alternate, oh, words are not my strong point tonight. Altering memories are also part of this game as well. Basically, what I'm saying is that this game is a very personal, challenging game for mature adults. So, like I said, it is okay if, for whatever reason, this stream uh, is too much. Uh, please feel free to pause and go away. But, you know, thank you so much for being here. Now that I've said the sort of content warnings, I'm going to go into safety guidelines because the best kind of fun is safe fun. Um, I'm going to do something for me, really, because obviously this is me playing a game online in front of you all. And I'm going to basically start to, uh, you know, I want to make sure that I'm safe as well as people are also safe in here. So I'm going to do something called lines and veils. I'm quite a big fan of this, if you're not sure what that means. Uh, a line is something that we just do not cross at all. So certain topics and themes that if they happen to just come up, we're just gonna cut away from it completely and not even mention it. If it comes up, I would just not look at it at all. So for me, lines include stuff like discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender identity and race, like discrimination on those parts, sexual violence in any form, including rape, sexual harassment, torture. Those things I do not want in this game at all. And I just want to lay it out there. Veils are topics or themes that we can see like as a focus, like a soft, soft focus, but we're not going to focus on them. We're going to just pan away from it. You know, they can be part of the story, but we're not going to explore those themes. So for me, my veils are graphic violence, graphic body horror, uh, unnecessary suffering of any one. You know, like we, we've seen horror films and we've seen action films. There's no need for it here in this game. 
Finally, I'm going to talk about something that I learned in improv, actually. We're going to talk about foundries. So foundries is a thing where basically you take something that you really, really enjoy and you want that to be in your game. So if you see it at any point, you go, ah, yes, I want that in my game. I see it. I see it. So for me, a foundry is cliches. I love over-the-top vampires. I love their look. I love the feel of them. Like, I loved watching Interview of a Vampire, like, you know, Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt and Kirsten Dunst. That, that, that weird sort of, like, a sort of ephemerate sort of look to them. I just, like, I love all that. So any chance for that, that will come up. Uh, I love, with solo RPGs in particular, meaningful choices. Like, I want to make sure that the impact I have, you know, I can feel it. Whether or not the consequences are good or bad, that's just up to it. And then finally, my other foundry is having emotional connection. So having, playing as putting myself into it, but also, you know, making sure that I have that connection with the uh, NPCs and whatnot. Cool. So what do you need to play when you're running a thousand euro vampire for yourself? Well, you need simply two dice. So you need a D10, so a 10 sided dice and a D6 and a way to record your game. And we're going to do it via Word document. I know I've seen quite a few live streams with it up just now. And uh, basically, I'm just going to type my answers to the prompts as we go. Quickly, I'm going to do vampire creation. I know we're on the timer here. So a vampire in this game is represented by five different traits. We have memories, we have skills, we've got resources, characters, and marks. And essentially, every time we receive a prompt, when we roll the dice, uh, one of our traits will be modified. And at times, it might you know, be a very bad consequence for us. But the main thing to remember is that we need to follow the instructions given in the prompt itself. So the most important thing we have for our vampire is memories. Memories and experiences are important moments which have shaped the vampire and make up the core of what it is to be this vampire's self. A experience is a particular event, but a memory is like an arc of several experiences that are tied together by a subject or theme. Like I said before, most prompts we'll get to will create an experience, and these experiences will combine one or other to make these memories. Um, but there's only so much that our poor, our poor vampire can remember, and old memories will get lost over the course of the game. And myself as the player will have to make some difficult decisions about which memories I should keep and which memories I should lose. When we're writing these experiences to be put into the game, the main thing to remember is that it should be a single sentence, so a sentence which combines what has happened and why this event matters to the vampire. When we begin, we have five spaces for memories, and each memory can contain up to three experiences in there. But as I said, we can lose memories over the course of the game. And one way we can preserve these memories if we run out of space is to move it to a diary, like a physical diary that we'd have in our resources, which we'll come to in a second. A diary can hold up to four memories, but like any resource, uh, it can be lost. And when this happens, we have to strike out the memories that the diary holds. We can only have a diary, one diary at any one time, and it must contain at least one memory. I know that sounds like a lot of, lot of admin, but we have to get to it. Uh, skills. These describe the capabilities and characteristics of the vampire, what they can do and what they might do. When we're instructed to record a new skill, the skill should be related to the content of the prompt, which is very straightforward. When the prompt instructs us to check a skill, we have to place a check mark next to it to indicate that the skill has been used. So unchecked skills are what we're capable of. Check skills are what we have done. That's key thing to remember for that one. Resources, as I sort of alluded to with the diary thing, are assets or structures that are useful to our vampire, or they are items that we value. When instructed to create resources, create resources which are contextually appropriate. So obviously, I can't have a mobile phone in the 14th century, that sort of thing. Um, when instructed to lose a resource, we have to strike it out. But it says to leave it uh, legible so that because lost things can come back in time. Like we're using a word processor, so that should be okay. Fourth thing we need to remember uh, is characters. Characters are people whom your vampire has a relationship with, uh, whether that is like a blood relationship, sort of siblings, a lover relationship or an enemy relationship, any sort of bond that they have with them. These characters should be named and described in like a sentence fragment, like a quick description of them. And thing to note here is that characters can be mortal or immortal. Um, there was a little thing in the notes that said, occasionally you'll realise a mortal has died of old age. Just strike them out. I thought, oh, OK. Um, outside the prompts, the characters cannot be killed. They, you know, it's just the way that the game sort of goes. And finally, the number five thing that makes up our vampire is marks. Visible indications of vampires' undying state or anything that sets them apart from normal people. Something that the vampire carries for their entire existence. 
So when we are playing this game, we have to start on page one, prompt one, and answer it. Then I roll a d10 and a d6. I take the results of d6 away from the d10, and if the number is positive, I will move forward that number of prompts. If the number is negative, I will move back that number of prompts, and then I will answer whichever prompt I land on. A zero, interestingly enough, means we encounter the same prompt page again. And there's actually a couple of other prompts underneath it, so if you visit, revisit, sorry, the page again, Again, you get a different prompt, so that's quite exciting. Things to note, if you are instructed to check a skill but don't have any available, you must lose a resource instead. If you're instructed to lose a resource but none are available, check a skill instead. The game ends where you're unable to check or lose a skill or resource when required to do so, or if a prompt tells you that the game has ended. Cool, so I think that's everything out of the way. I am going to share my screen. Oh, exciting times, I know. Uh, I am capable of this, by the way. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm sharing my screen now. So I actually did a little bit of prep beforehand because I thought, you know what, it's no fun if I have just sort of waffled on about game mechanics and then we have to go through character creation for 30 minutes. So when I'm starting out, I have to have at least five memories created with an experience in each. I then have sorted some characters out, three mortals, one immortal, three resources, three skills, and one mark. So I'll go through them and then we'll begin. So I've decided this vampire is going to be a French lady vampire because we don't get enough French ladies in our RPGs. I am Eloise, daughter of Lord and Lady Chastain, born outside Paris in the 14th century. I am the middle child, along with my two sisters. We live in the high society. Uh, when you're creating the character, interestingly enough, uh, you have to sort of combine the different traits you have. So those things I was talking about before, like the different characters and the different uh, resources and stuff, they sort of make up what you have. So my mother, uh, Lady Genevieve Jastain, rules the household with a rod of iron. I cannot wait to get away from her overbearing manner. Uh, my dress was designed to have pockets. Shock, I know. I have to get pockets in there somehow. In order for me to carry, to be able to carry around my needlework. I do like the practicality of it, but secretly fear that the other ladies of high society look down on my fashion choices. Number four is, out of the three of us, I am seen as the most charming Chastain sibling, which riles Francina uh, no end. I take great relish in this knowledge. And then finally, because I had to create a memory of how I was bitten as it then became an undead vampire, I've simply gone for the immortal, which is the character I'll introduce you to, but uh, Oliver Dubois commented on how pleasing my harpsichord playing is to his ear and invited me to supper. Little did I know I would provide the main course. I think this. I think my Eloise is quite a, a witty vampire, I will say. So currently we have three mortals. We have Francina, the oldest Chastain sister, and I've described her as an old maid. Now, <laughs> I say that basically I, she's unmarried. Uh, that's what I wanted to get out. But obviously in certain societies at certain uh, times uh, in history, beyond 30 and you're not married is uh, bad things. So I thought I'd put that up there. Uh, Gabriella, who's the youngest Chastain sister, uh, I put her as a dreamer because we've all read Pride and Prejudice and the youngest sister is a bit uh, whew, away with the fairies, so that is Gabriella. And then Lady Genevieve, the mother and matriarch of the Chastain household. So three very, very different women in there. Well, I'd get in there. And then our immortal, we've got uh, Olive... Ugh, we've got Olive Dubois, a vampire posing as an upstanding gentleman and lord, one I thought would be my betrothed. And then just to finish it off, I've got three resources that I picked early on. I have the household itself, La Maison de Chastain, because frankly, you know, when you're a vampire or a young lady vampire who's just recently come into it, of course you want to have your home, wherever that is, which is outside Paris. Uh, we've also got my riding horse, Philippe, because frankly, I, I am a 14th century noble lady. Of course, I'd have a horse. And of course, my day dress with pockets in brackets. Um, skills. I have a charming demeanor. I am proficient in the harpsichord and needlework. Um, to be honest, the book did say like, you could do anything, you know, that's your skills. And I was like, can't think of anything at last minute. So we've gone, we've gone full lady noble. Sod it. And then the mark. We've gone for an ever-bleeding wound on the right side of my neck, which I hide with a wide choke collar. God, I can't say that. But I actually, look, I did a little bit there. It's makeup, don't worry, guys. Okay, 
So we've got start of it. We've got everything. So ready to play. So I'm going to pick prompt one. We're going to go there. Do, 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 do. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, prompt one. Oh dear. <laughs> Okay, so prompt one is this. In your blood hunger, you destroy someone close to you, kill a mortal character, create a mortal if none are available, and take the skill bloodthirsty. All right, so I am going to add that skill now. Bloodthirsty. And I need to kill a mortal. Oh, dear. Well... The only two memories I have with my house, like I, th I feel like it, <clears throat> I can't be Gabriella, because like she's she's a dreamer, she's charming. So I think it's either between Francine or Genevieve, and oh, we've already got bad blood with Genevieve, so I'm gonna kill the mortal. Uh, let's go uh, for Lady Genevieve. So I'm going to add an experience to it. So into experience, uh, into memory too. So I'm going to add, what am I going to say? I'm going to say my mother told that I was a disgrace. Could not stand her mocking tone and silenced her. So, my mother told me I was a disgrace. I couldn't stand her mocking tone and silenced her. Damn straight. No one, no one gets, no one pisses off Eloise. I've decided, badass French lady, let's go. So yeah, so again, with these experiences, you have to say what happened as the event and then have, why does it matter? So that's why I'm sort of doing like these two part sentences like this. Um, I'm sure there is a better way to do it, but obviously when you're on your own and you have to speak these things out loud is, uh, is a different thing. Okay, so I've done that. Uh, I now, I get to roll dice. She's very, oh no, I need to, I need to get rid of my mother, don't I? <laughs> so we can say goodbye to, oh no, where's strikeout on here? Yeah, there we go. Goodbye, mother. Oh, and we hardly knew you, I know. Okay, so that was prompt one. Now I'm going to roll my d10, which is a six. And then I'm going to roll my d6, which is a two. So six take two is four. So I move forward four prompts. So let's go. So we go one, so that's five. Yeah, so I can't count. Oh, God. Ah, okay. So prompt five is this. You murder someone you love or respect rather than let them expose you. Kill a character. Check a skill. If you have no living characters, kill no one and create a beloved mortal character who you have betrayed. Ah. Uh, you love someone you love? Well... I mean, I, um, ooh, okay. I'm thinking, right, I, I feel, like, I've already got rid of my mother, right? I don't want, my sisters, like, they had nothing to do with it, right? I'm thinking we're going to take this back to Oliver, and we're going to, like, get Oliver out of the picture, because, frankly, he is not a nice guy, as I've painted him. Uh, I need to check a skill first. Well, I, I just got bloodthirsty. So why don't I just tick that? Do, 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 do. Oh no, I'm just gonna, you know what? Tick. <laughs> We're very advanced here at what am I rolling? Okay, so I've ticked the bloodthirsty. So that has to come into this, this prompt quite a bit. I think that I would have gone straight uh, after the, the, the killing of my mother. I would have gone straight to Oliver and he would have like gone, no, you idiot, you idiot girl, that sort of, that sort of thing. And I'm not happy with that. I'm not being, I don't like being told I'm an idiot. I don't like being told I'm a girl. So let's, let's get rid of Oliver. Okay. No, Oliver.
Well, if I shouted at me for ruining everything after my after the death of my mother, you will expose the both of us. Oh, exclamation point. Uh, I I did something. What did I do? I con. Thanks, Google. <laughs> Can't spell. I appreciate this is more me typing for my own amusement, but thanks for joining, friends. Okay, so this next experience I've added is, Oliver shouted at me for ruining everything after the death of my mother. You will expose the both of us. I've realized I didn't need him and his condescending tone in my life and tore his throat out in a bloody rage. Oh, both. Both literally and metaphorically. I think that's good. And yeah, I guess I have to check off. Uh, sorry, I have to check. Check off killer character. Yeah. Let's get rid of... Get rid of the vampire. Bye-bye, Oliver. Nice. Okay. Great. That's two, two down, two to go, I think. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's two prompts done. Uh, let's roll again. Okay, let's do... All right, so we've got a d10. Roll that. That's another six. Okay, and then the d6. Oh, that's another six, so it's zero. So I'm coming onto the second prompt in day... F oh, prompt five. Ooh, okay. A character you victimize comes to you in a dream. Do they curse or forgive you? Receive a mark. Mm, okay, so a mark is something that I have to carry forward as a vampire uh, that I need to hide in some way. A character you victimize comes to you in the dream. So I'm guessing... I mean... Oh, I've got two big choices here. Do I want to be shouted at by my mum? Or do I want to be shouted at by my dead lover? <laughs> hmm... I think I'm. I think Eloise would be more scared of her mother in this respect. So I will. I will go back up to memory two and add the final experience here. I don't know if I said earlier. So like I said, we have uh, five experiences as the vampire in our head, and each memory can hold three experiences. Um, so this will be the final one that, for the mother memory. So comes to me in the dream. Do they curse or forgive you? Receive a mark. Uh, Okay, so I... I still hear a shrill. Yes. Spell demeanor. I still hear her shrill screams cursing me, and my unladylike demeanor uh, has she before, before, hang on, before the. Uh, attack. Her cries haunt me. Her cries uh, and sudden, sudden silence haunt me for days afterwards. Okay, so the final memory I've got is I still hear her shrill screams cursing me and my unladylike demeanor before the attack uh, in my dreams. Uh, hang on, yeah, it's in my dreams, that's it. In my dreams. Oh, God, I can't spell dreams now. In my dreams, I still hear, hear her shrill screams cursing me and my unladylike demeanor just before the attack. Her cries and sudden silence haunt me for days afterwards. 
Okay, so I now need to add a mark. So I've already got my bleeding wound. <laughs> I want to put tinnitus, like tinnitus even. Like I still hear like the sounds, but um, I, I don't know if I can spell it. I, d I know I'm sharing, so it's going to be really, really awkward if I can't spell tinnitus. Um, so I am going to put something else instead. I am going to put... I'll just put the slight ringing in my ears. Like the slight, yeah, I'll just put that. And you know, you folks know I mean tinnitus, but but to save face and to save pronunciations, I know I'm not pronouncing any of these names right, but we'll do that. So the new mark is slight uh, ringing in my ears. And how do I hide it? How do I hide this? Uh, like the Like the pain, I just, I guess, how do I hide this mark? I hide it by always having my ears covered with everything. So first it would be like my long hair and then maybe like some sort of hat close to my head to so had that pressure into it. So uh, I'll do that. I, I have, I have a collection of hats <laughs> that add pressure i don't know um uh, no no let's hang on i want a collection of hats okay i do want that i'll tell you what i'll put that i'll put that in here sod it rules out the window i'm adding collection of fine hats to my resources so i have a collection of hats that help with the the, the uh, constant unnerving unnerving sound of silence Right, there we go. A new mark saying the slight ringing in my ears that, you know, it's painful, but I have a, a collection of hats, uh, fine hats, sorry, collection of fine hats that help with the constant unnerving sound of silence, uh, like the black noise. Like, mm. Great. Was there anything I also had to do for this prompt? Let me have a check. No, they, they cursed me, which is fine. That's my mother for you. She's cursing me. Uh, cries and sudden silence. Yeah. All right, so that memory is now full, so I can no longer add to memory two, which is fine. All good. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess time to move on to the next prompt. Okay, so D10 rolling. It's a four. Oh. <laughs> All right, and a six. It's a four again. Oh my goodness, we're back to zero. We're going to the third prompt on this day five, or the prompt five. Okay, so the third prompt on this page is. Love hidden within your soul uh, propels you on a foolish quest for absolution from some great guilt. What wrong did you try to right? How do you fail and make everything such, oh, everything much, much worse? Lose a resource and check a skill. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'll read that again because I fumbled it up. Love hidden within your soul propels you on a foolish quest for absolution from some great guilt. What wrong did you try to right? How do you fail and make everything much, much worse? And then I have to lose a skill and uh, I've got to lose a resource and check a skill. Okay. Uh, mm, 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 I think. Well. Oh, it's going to be something with the sisters, isn't it? I think. Oh, no. Oh, I'm not going to. Mm, okay. So here's my thinking. It's going to be. Oh, maybe I'm going to have to create a new memory because I don't think anything I want in this. No, I've got this top memory here, but that I am Eloise. So what I'm thinking is it's going to have to be something with the younger sister, so Gabriella. Um, I think she was very saddened by the sudden loss of Mama, uh, Mama Genevieve. And obviously I've run away. And I think what I'm going to try and do is like, I think because everyone knows, I th it's going to be honest, it's going to be very hard to say that I wasn't the murderer. I clearly was. I had some grief against uh, Mama. So I think I want to go ask Gabriella for her forgiveness um, and try and put things right. But now here's the thing. My skills aren't great. I've got a charming demeanor. Proficient in harpsichord. That's not going to work here, is it? Um, I think, yes, so I'm going to use my charming demeanor. So I'll tick that off. What? Tick charming demeanor off uh, and lose a resource. Now, 
Let's go through the resources, okay? We have La Maison de Chastain, my riding horse Philippe, my day dress with pockets, <laughs> and a collection of fine hats. It's going to be the house. I'm going to lose the house. So I will lose that resource. Let's, let's strike it. Strike it from... Gone. Don't have the house anymore. Why? Why, you may ask? Because it burnt the ground. That's what I've decided. Uh, so, I think I want to go make up with both sisters, we'll say, but definitely Gabriella, because she was definitely the most affected by Mama's death. But it's not worked out. <laughs> so, okay, let me think. Ensues at the... Where I ask my sisters for forgiveness. Forgiveness. Uh, a struggle ensues at the meeting where I ask for my sisters for forgiveness for uh, mother's death. Death. Um, a candle uh, topples and flames ignite Ig God, uh, flames uh, ignite egg you can see i don't normally <laughs> type my words around i can't say ignite uh, flames uh, spread there we go there we go throughout the house burning burning all bridges to home. Okay, so I've added to memory one. I said, a struggle ensues at the meeting where I ask my sisters for forgiveness for mother's death. A candle topples and flames spread throughout the house, burning all bridges to home. So a very significant, poignant moment where I'm like, nope, la maison, finito, gone. All right. Now we are going to. That's that's that prompt. I've cut, I've checked off my charming demeanor. I tried. I was very charming. They didn't. Apparently, that's not enough for killing your mother. <laughs> so, but I've lost the house as a result. That's quite sad. All right. Next prompt. Now, I, I should say as well. If I roll a zero again, I actually just move on to the next prompt because there's only three separate prompts for each like over each number as it were so just fyi on that because i thought d10s rolled higher than these but anyway okay so the d10 is a seven mm, promising promising and the d6 is a one hooray so we move forward six so we'll go to number 11 all right number 11 <gasps> okay so number 11 prompt is how do you find solace from the raging hunger? Yeah, ra sorry. <laughs> I'll start that again. I'll probably start. I won't laugh in this one. Okay. How do you find solace from the raging hunger within you? You may lose one checked or unchecked skill. Interesting. Okay. So, oh, okay. So, how do I get rid of my, this, this hunger I have, like, because I've been quite bloodthirsty up to this point. I killed my mother. I killed Oliver. <sighs> oh, I'm no longer charming. That's interesting. Well, let's let's look at my skills. So we've got two ticked ones. We have bloodthirsty and charming demeanor. How do I find solace in raging hunger? Like I feel like like the obvious one here is obviously to get rid of bloodthirsty, right? Because that's already ticked. And I don't want to be bloodthirsty anymore. But maybe I should get rid of Harpsichord. <laughs> maybe, maybe I find solace. You know what? Sorry, I'm going to do that. I'm going to lose being proficient in the Harpsichord completely. So I'm going to cross that out completely. And I am going to say, ah, which one can I add to? None of these really fit, do they? How do I find sauce? Well, no, it sort of goes with the Oliver thing, I think. 
because it's like I because there's a definitely bloodthirsty theme there. So I think I'm gonna add to the fifth memory my final experience. So how do I find solace from the raging hunger within you? And I lose proficiency in harpsichord. Oh, of course, because I I played harpsichord for him. This ah, oh, of course. All right, okay. See, it's all coming together. I love it. Uh, so I play the harpsichord. <laughs> I will. Oh, hang on. I play the harpsichord one last time. Letting the notes, the notes, letting the notes feel. Sort of a calm. Nah. Thanks, Google. Uh, <laughs> I know this makes no sense if, this is, if people are listening to the podcast version of this. Uh, the beast is no longer. Uh, it's is uh, really good. Hang on, this is silent. Oh, no. Ah, hang on. Da, 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 da. Oh, no. Okay, I play the harps chord one one last time. Sorry, thanks Google. I play the harps chord one last time, letting the notes provide some sort of accompaniment to the howling pain within. The beast is silent for now. It's that idea of like playing away your feelings and like just trying to control it and using music as sort of a, a calming effect. Well, yeah, take that, Oliver. Compliment me on my music, you bastard. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, what else do I need to do? Um, uh, yeah, that was it. I lost the skill, which was uh, which was the proficient in harpsichord. I'm still a little bit bloodthirsty. All right, let's move on to the next prompt. So you got your d10. That's a five, a five on the d10. And we roll with a d6. And that's a three. So we move forward to prompts. So that is number 13. Well, unlucky for some. Ooh, okay. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so number 13's prompt is this. Generations of the same family serve you. This line starts from any living mortal character or from the descendants of a dead mortal character. What bizarre rituals do they tie to their servitude? Lose a resource and create servitors of lineage resource. Ooh, oh, this is... Okay, so I've done the thing where all my relationships are my family. Um, and they're all dead mortals or more so it has to it has to be part of my family in some way i think i think my family is scared of me as a result of what i did and burning down the house was just like one in a long line of events and i think gabriella runs away like they they part ways francina uh, Francine, sorry, and Gabriella part their ways. And I think Gabrielle marries. And as the years go on, she, um, she, like, her, her descendants and stuff, because obviously no fortune anymore, no nothing like that. So she probably has to go into governess roles and, and serving ways. What bizarre rituals do they tie to their servitude? I think Gabriella took pity on me. Like she, she can't believe the monster that I've become. So um, I'm going to lose resource first. Sorry, I'm talking away out of this. Oh no, <laughs> not my day dress with pockets. <laughs> um, I think oh, I was going to be several years, right? 
it's like over several generations so i think i'm gonna lose philippe my lovely lovely horse or nightmare if we're, if we're going that way um let's get rid of philippe bye bye philippe and then i need to create a resource servitors of lineage we'll go right under with my collection of fine hats so this is this is going well servitors of lineage of, of the lineage. Uh, oh, this book is so pretty, by the way. So I'd say that. Okay, so I've got this now. Uh, and I... Whew. So I finish this one. I finish this one. <laughs> so that, that, that one about my dress having pockets is... <laughs> <laughs> makes me laugh so much it's so silly so what i think i might do i'm gonna start a new memory completely i'm gonna actually create a diary i think at this point so like i said before if i don't have space in my head i can always put a a, a memory into a diary so i'm gonna do that and the first thing i need to do is create the diary so i add that to my resources uh, so diary and i need to describe it Let's go for what do what do people use in the 14th century? It's like I'm guessing it's like a leather bound like parchment paper or something like that. So we'll go for leather bound book of loose parchment paper uh, written with ink and quill. Fancy. All right. So now we've got the diary. I should actually, I'm going to create the diary thing down here. So we've oop, got it. Uh, there we go. And then let's do, um, what do I do? So this is when I go formatting is a thing, is it not, Fiona? Uh, so we'll do that. And oh, you fool. Oh no. You see, you see the tricks. Oh. <laughs> my idiocy when it comes to this. There we go. All right, and then we can remove those dots because we don't need them. All right, so we're gonna start with a new entry in the diary and I am going to talk about my lineage, the servitudes. Uh, mm -hmm. What bizarre ritual do they tie to the servitude? I forgot how to spell Gabriella then. <laughs> Oh, Gabrielle. Gabriella. No. Descendants take what's it called? The house? The Maison de Chef. At the Le Maison de Chati. Chatan, Chatin. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Oh, I've spelled, have I spelled Maison wrong? Yes, of course. Th thanks, Google. Um, uh, oh, you know what they do? I just have this really horrific thing in my head. You know when you see in um, in films where there's like little lost cats and they put out like a saucer of milk? I think what they do, like every like midnight they put out a small saucer <laughs> or maybe like maybe not a saucer maybe like a, a teacup and saucer with uh animal blood in it um wherever they can um oh maybe they um, no i think I'm, I'm gonna leave that thought in my head i don't want to get read too much into it because i can only i mean like use a little bits of descriptions and stuff because obviously these are all just fragments of memories uh Take pity on me after the fire at Le Maison de Chatan. Um, <laughs> promises to look after me and and with uh, a source of uh, animal blood uh, each night, each night, night with uh, uh, in a teacup left on the 
on her porch, on her families. Did they have porches in the 14th, in the 14th century? They do now, friends, because it's France, and that's where we're going. So, on our thoughts. Um, well, how do I feel about this? I am... Um, I am grateful. If a little bit put out as <laughs> I am grateful if a little bit sorry, spelled that wrong, a little bit put out as it <laughs> is not her finest China. Boom. There we go. I'm still I'm still a bitch in death. That's how we're going with this. Okay, so so the new diary has one entry for um, memory one, and the entry the experience is this: Gabrielle and her descendants take pity on me after the fire at La Maison de Chastain. Chastain. I don't know why I keep saying Chastain. Chastain. It's I guess because I'm so old now I forget my roots. Um, she promises to look after me and provides me with a source of animal blood each night in a teacup left on her family's porch. I am grateful, if a little put out, a little bit put out, as it's not her finest china. <laughs> oh, man, this is so much fun. All right, and I've lost a resource, which is my horse, Philip. Um, oh, oh, did the animal blood come from Philip at the beginning? Oh, damn. Philip was the first to go. That's really sad. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> didn't think. Um, so yeah, so I lost a resource. Uh, I've gained two resources technically, the servit uh, servitors of, serv I don't know, servants of lineage. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. It doesn't matter. And I've got my new diary uh, to put this uh, memory in. All right. Okay. We'll roll again. So D10. That's a two. So I think we're going to go back in this one. We'll find out. It's a d6. It's a four. So that's minus two. So we're going to go back to... Oh, we're going back to 11. <laughs> so we're going to go to prompt two on 11. Okay. You discover an internal focus which lets you maintain control of your vampire self. Lose a violent memory and take the skill, I control the beast and rewrite any unchecked skill as something new. What new name do you take to distance yourself from once, from what you once were? How is this name symbolic? Mm. Okay, internal focus to control myself. So I need to lose, so I, I take the skill, I control the beast, so I can do that. I control. <clears throat> I control the beast. Uh, and rewrite any unchecked, unchecked skills. Oh, and rewrite any unchecked skill as something new. So I can, I can, oh, I can do something with needle. <laughs> I can do something with needle work now. Oh, internal focus. Well, that usually indicates to me something meditation wise, right? So I think. I think I've discovered like a spirituality. Eloise has discovered a spirituality of in herself. So we're going to rewrite needlework. We don't need needlework anymore. Sod needlework. It's not helpful, as we've discovered. Um, I'm going to rewrite it as... We're going to rewrite it as... Ability to keep... No, I guess control the beast is keeping calm anyway. Oh, it's keeping the vampire back, isn't it? Keep, to keep my head in the most dire of situations. So, I, cool headed is what I mean. So I don't know why I wrote it out, cool headed. Cool, all right, so I've changed needlework into ability to keep my head in the most dire of situations. Quite, uh, put an S on there. Cool headed, essentially. That's cool, that's all right. Uh, what's the next thing I have to do? So, lose a violent memory. And I have to strike it. I have to delete it completely. Ooh, I think it's... Well, it's a choice between... Oh, shoot. So, I could 
effectively, so I appreciate I've not got it all on my screen, but I could effectively get rid of me killing Mama Genevieve. Um, but then it leaves an interesting thing, because then Oliver obviously shouts at me for the death of my mother. I, I don't know if I would remember killing her. So that that implies that I didn't kill her. Oh, I think I didn't kill her, so... Ooh, okay. I think I am going to then... Yeah, I'll lose the violent memory of me killing my mother. And delete. Whoa, it's gone. Gone! Out of my head. But now, oh, but now I can, I can add something new. <laughs> um, so, uh, what new name do you take to distance yourself from what from what you once were. How is this name symbolic? Ah, oh, man, uh, I quite liked Eloise. I've got to be honest. Genevieve. I get it has to be something like a play on Genevieve. Um, I, had, I, the thing is, I did look up some French names before we did the stream, and honestly, not all of them were great. Um, certainly surnames are a bit off. Ooh, okay. How about this? Um, I've just lost my page, typically, as I, as I do that. How about this? I am going to put... Well, it's not necessarily distancing from what I was once was. Well, here's... Ah, okay. So I'm distancing myself from being uh, a, a Chastain. So how about I take on the name Jen... Uh, Jean, or Jean, <laughs> uh, Dubois. How is it symbolic? I take on the new. I take on the new name and persona. Persona of Jean or Jean. I don't, I, I'm going to say Jean. I know it's spelled differently, and I think that's a male name, but we don't care about that because solid. My, my game, my rules. Um, Jean Dubois. Uh, to distance myself from the innocence that was, was Eloise Chastain. It's symbolic. There is something poetic about acknowledging, acknowledging my mother, mother and my betrothed, my uh, betrothed, the god damn, I can't spell betrothed, my ex lover. In the name, in the name. Uh, hang on, acknowledgement. In a name. But I can no longer remember her face. That I am, that I am at peace with what Dubois made me. Okay, so, new entry. I take on the new name and persona of Jean, Jean uh, Dubois, I don't know why I say it twice, Jean Dubois, to distance myself from the innocence, innocent that was Eloise Chante uh, Chastain, and that I am at peace with what Dubois made me. There is something poetic about acknowledging my mother in a name, but I cannot, I can no longer remember her face. <laughs> okay, uh, yep, so we've got the skill. We've changed the skill to something new. I've got a new memory. All right, time to roll again. So a d10. It's a two again. Mm -hmm. And we've got the d6. It's a two. Ooh, we're still on the same page. So the third and final prompt. Oh dear. So, your control breaks. You slaver and kill and revel in blood. You are your hunger. 
Oh no. What were the last words of your closest friendly character, mortal or immortal, as you feasted upon them? Changed a beloved memory to lie uh, to a lie in which you protect uh, in which you murder to protect yourself. Create a skill that invokes the name of the dead character in a mocking way. Oh no, Gabrielle! <laughs> no! Oh no, Gabrielle. Okay. Oh, Gabrielle's dead. Uh. Alright, so let's say everyone say goodbye to Gabrielle. Boop. Dead. Alright. I gotta be honest, Francine's probably dead at this point as well, but we'll get to her, I'm sure. Okay, uh, I need to change... Create a skill that invokes... Ooh. <laughs> create... So, sorry. Create a skill that invokes the, the name of a dead character in a mocking way. Okay. Now, I know I'm gonna... I think... It's, it's gonna be hard to, like, actually put her name in, because Gabrielle is, a, uh, I think, maybe Guardian Angel. Like, like, like Gabriel, perhaps, that I've become, oh, because she was kind of like trying to be my guardian angel. And now I, I don't know, I, I'll have to justify it in some way, but I think I'll put guardian angel. <laughs> like a protector of some sort, I guess, so. Guardian. Guardian angel. Gabriel. <laughs> I'll know what that means when we come to it. Like a guardian angel, angel Gabriel. Yeah. I'll know when that comes to it. It's fine. Everything's looking up for Eloise or Jean. Uh, so now, I oh, so I need to change a beloved memory to a lie in which you murder to protect yourself. So a beloved memory. <sighs> okay. So here's the thing. So one of my earlier memories, uh, number four, was out of the three of us, I am seen as the most charming Chastain sibling in which riles up Francine no end, and I take great relish in this. I'm going to change that to Gabrielle. And that she was always... Uh, hang on. How do I spell Gabrielle? <laughs> oh, man. I can't even remember how to spell her name. She's already gone from my mind. Like, I always like the fact that she uh, was always, like, annoyed and it was always, like, getting in the way and that sort of thing, even though, really, she's trying to protect me. And, like, I guess that sort of that sort of little itch, that little, mm, like, like, the whole she promises to look after me thing that I've got in the diary, well, that's not true. She's doing it to, to get her own gains. Uh, okay, so I need to write in... I'm going to write in my diary. I'm going to put this memory in. So I need to... What were the last words? What were the last words of your closest friendly friendly character, mortal immortal, as you feasted upon them? Uh, let's see. What were her last words? I've generally forgotten how to spell my own name. Yeah, that's how you spell it, Louise. Sorry, brain farts. Oh, we've gone past an hour. Thanks, if you're still here, thanks for staying with me. <laughs> Did not do enough. Uh, uh, Gab, Brie, L, Chokes, Holding, uh, trying chokes, trying to hold back tears, tears. Um, um, I'm so sorry, I did not do enough. Chokes, trying to hold back tears. Um, let me just hang on. Let me just read this again. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with this, but just FYI, maybe content warning, warning for you folks here. I... Wait. 
tonight, I feast on the finest. No, nah, I can't be right. Not be. I will just to say satisfy. <laughs> Sorry. If. Okay. So. So the last word she says to me is, "I'm so sorry, Eloise. I didn't do enough." Gabrielle chokes, trying to hold back tears as I hold back her hair to bite down on her neck. Tonight, I feast upon, I feast upon, not on, I feast upon the finest, finest of blood and will not be satisfied with secondhand china cups. Ugh. Well, great. <laughs> Great. I think now, because there is a prompt, I did say before that every couple of prompts you realise that maybe some, yeah, another mortal person has died. So I think at this point, Francine, bless her, she had, she's a bit like uh, Peggy in Hamilton. She's like, and Peggy, and Francine. I'm going to say she's died through old age. Um, which I think is fine at this point, to be honest with you. Um, that's, I'm, I'm cool with that. Because... Frankly, I'm struggling enough <laughs> with the with the death of like the only person that actually liked me. All right, we've done the last words. We've done change a beloved memory to a lie, uh, create a skill, done all those. Okay, let's hope we're gonna move on to more positive. So D12, uh, D12, D10. That's a three. We've gone up a little bit. All right, and then D6. It's a one. Ooh, we move through. Wait, oh, we're back to <laughs> back to thirty. <laughs> Back to 13. So we're going to the second prompt on, on page 13. Oh my word. Oh, nice. I like this one. Okay. Your servants are numerous, enthusiastic, and sometimes useless. Create a skill based on a memory. This is a skill you use to control them. Well, I mean, I've put, I've kind of put the fear of God into them by, by <laughs> killing, killing my sister. Um, but, I don't think I'm going to say this out loud for myself but I don't think I can control them with the use of pockets and dresses but that would be amazing like just like show a pocket like oh I've got a pocket you better listen to me <laughs> no I think I think I need to go back to this whole charming thing again persuade oh wait there's um they do like a hypnotic thing don't they like oh they can mesmerizing gaze that's what I'll have Oh yes. Let me just double check. Is that a, that was a thing that we could do? Skills. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do a mesmer I mesmerize with my eyes. A bit like the hood from Thunderbirds. Although I think some people might be too young to remember Thunderbirds. Ugh. Okay. Um oh, make sure I've got yep. Okay. So new skill is uh Okay. Yeah, I just wondered if I had to create a new, new experience. Didn't really say so, so that's fine. Oh, well, maybe... Mm, hang on. Sorry. It said... Let me read this again. So I've got it right. Your servants are numerous, enthusiastic, and sometimes uh, create a skill based on a memory. This is a skill you use control with. It doesn't say create a new experience. So I'm going to say it's it's a memory I already have. Um, oh, no, well, I guess I can add to it, can't I? Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm gabbling at this point, but that's totally fine. All right, but I'm going to do mesmerizing gaze mes no ah uh, google help no hypnotic gaze it is that's okay hypnotic gaze um uh yeah i in my head it is definitely mesmerizing gaze but frankly i am not i i hate seeing the red underlined thing when that will come up so i'll have that but i'm going to create Ooh, would I create it there? Her descendants are here, aren't they? Um, so the the hypnotic gaze, I think, was come from the most charming thing. That I've always been very charming and get persuading people to what I want. So I think I'm going to add to the diary entry and do the final one. So we're gonna we're gonna add experiences. Um, Gabri 
Oh man, I can't spell Gabrielle. Gabrielle's descendants. Uh, uh, do the bidding. Do the bidding. And do my bidding uh, with and uh, hang on. Mm. Gabriella's descendants do my bidding with just a simple, simple glance from me. Always knew my charming demeanor. Good use yes. at some point, at some point. All right, so we've got Gabrielle's descendants do my bidding with just a simple glance from me. I always knew my charming demeanor would be put to good use at some point. Oh. Okay, great. We've done that. Got the memory. Got to, yeah, I think that works. Yeah. They're also probably afraid of me at this point. I mean, I did, I did kill, I did kill her. Okay, I'm gonna move on. A D10. Uh, let's roll high. A four. We're slowly, slowly reducing high. And a D6. It's a one. Oh, we're moving forward. Oh, we're going to sixteen. Okay. Uh oh, sorry. Uh, we have okay. Number f the prompt of 15 is, while traveling, you come into conflict with another immortal. Gain a mark. Who are they? What trick do you play on them? Create a new immortal character. <gasps> okay, create a mark. Ooh, I think. Okay, so, so far for marks, just in case, FYI, we've got uh, an ever bleeding wound on the right side of my neck, which I hide with a wide choke collar, uh, and a slight ringing in my ears, tinnitus essentially uh, but i have a collection of fine hats that will help me with that constant unnerving sound of silence um for this one i think i want to have i okay in my head when vampires fight like it's sorry i now have the weird image of giraffes fighting with their necks but that's not what i want with vampires <laughs> I think for this, I'm going to. I, I feel like claws are going to have like some claws. Like, oh, this it, ah, this is the thing. So the immortals don't have to be vampires. They can be anything. They can be like werewolves. They can be ghouls. That sort of thing. Um, for this, I I want something for this. I want something with long claws. Like not like not like Wolverine claws, obviously, but like something enough, and it scratches me, and the scratch doesn't heal well, and it, I have this horrible mark on my arm, which I have to hide. And it's only on one, one arm. So I, I do the, the thing where I have one glove and maybe that inspires a, a famous now deceased pop star. We'll never know. Okay, so I'm going to put in uh, uh, a long scratch marks on my left arm. Uh, 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 uh. Who are they? Create a new mortal character. Okay, so let's think. Uh, oh, well, we don't want it strike. We don't want it strike through just yet. No, stop. Uh, oh, that did not help at all, did it? <laughs> I'll work on it. It's fine. I'll work on it in a second. Uh, let me think. What? What name? I'm really bad at coming up with names on the spot. So let's go for. Oh, I know, I know. Okay, let's go for Beatrice. Beatrice. Not Potter, no. Uh, Beatrice, looking at anything for inspiration around the room. Uh, you know what, why don't I just call her Beatrice? She could be like Madonna. Um, Beatrice is... Ooh, let's go with Werewolf, shall we? Like a... a Young, uh, young, a upstanding member of the community, and also a werewolf. 
Sorted. Nice. Hello, Beatrice. Uh, mm -mm -mm. And also a werewolf. It's fine. All right. Um, who are they? What trick did you play on them? What trick did I play on them? Mm -mm -mm -mm. So they didn't say I had to use a skill for this. I just had to play a trick on them. Oh, no. Oh, nuts. Uh, oh, wait. Ah, here. Yes, I've got a new name, haven't I? So I'm going to put this here. So uh, I came into conflict with another immortal. Uh, and again, I'm out. We're getting the scratches. What trick do I play on them? Who are they? Ooh. Beatrice uh, is a... Oh, cool. uh, what did I, sorry, oh, it's very late at night, so I have to wait around here. Outstanding member of the community. Oh, I know. Outstanding member of a, a business woman and also a werewolf. Good old Beatrice. Okay, Beatrice is a local businesswoman. This woman with sus suspicious. Oh, here we go. Suspicious. Thanks, Google. Uh, <laughs> suspicious uh, dealings. Means I confront her after making a large, a large order of miscellaneous. No, Google, please. Yes, I did mean miscellaneous. <laughs> miscellaneous. Uh, yes. Uh, meat. And the fight ensues. Ensued. I confronted her after after follow and make and and a fight ensued. I. Ooh, oh no. I. Uh, so it's just, it's just, it's, I, confront, I confronted her after making a large order miss, miss, which I never paid for. And if I should, she is a worthy, worthy adversary. Thanks, Google. Um, and I shan't, shall, shan't. Sh uh, shall not be keen, keen to meet, meet her again in a hurry. I mean, it's not really a trick I played on her. It's more like I wanted to see what this large order of meat was, and I didn't like it, so I didn't pay for it. That's that's the kind of trick where you don't pay for services, you know. So it. Yeah, it, I, I, has, I also had to double check. It was a trick I played on them, not they played on me. So, okay. Beatrice is a local businesswoman with suspicious dealings. Ooh. Uh, in brackets, dodgy staff, people going missing. People going missing. Ooh. Tasty. Tasty pies. We'll do like a proper Demon Bar Barbarous Fleet Street here. Yes, I know I spelled dodgy wrong. It's fine. Um, so Beatrice is a local businesswoman with suspicious dealings, i.e. dodgy staff, people going missing, tasty pies. I confronted her after making a large order of miscellaneous meat, in quotation marks, which I then never paid for. And the fight ensued. She is a worthy adversary, and I shall not be keen to meet her again in a hurry. All right. Solid. Solid, and we've got the immortal character of Beatrice. Ah, upstanding, <laughs> upstanding member of the community in quotation marks there. A businesswoman and also a werewolf. Okay, cool. That's that. And I'm going to roll again, so D10. Oh, it's a 10. I got very excited then because I was like, it's a zero. <gasps> but that's a 10, so that's really exciting. Okay, and then the D6. It's a one. Oh, wow, that's the most I can get. Okay, so we're going flipping forward to 24. Okay. 
Oh, for God's sake. All right. <laughs> the prompt on uh, the first one is, uh, you are forced to adopt a new name. Why? God damn it. I just... Oh, I just got. I just got. And I just got my new persona. For God's sake. Fine. Um, maybe it's because bloody Beatrice was like, this woman didn't pay me for my miscellaneous meat. She's she's a bad and literally. I think. Oh, it's gonna be bad, bad blood. Oh, damn her. Damn Beatrice. Honestly. Okay. So new name. After our fight, Beatrice spread rumors of uh, ill repute about this Jean Dubois. It's Jean Dubois. so I had to cast it aside, aside, like new, like old clothing. Uh, do I, is that, it just says I am forced to adopt a new name. I don't have to say what the new name is. And maybe I'll come back to that. Maybe I'll, I don't, I, I don't need to say why. Maybe, uh, I'll go back to my old name. Sod it. It was a it was a it was a brief fling. I thought I liked it, didn't like it. And returned to Eloise Chastain. <laughs> I was almost gonna write then that bitch. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll put that. That bitch. Bitch. That bitch. Oh, okay. I on yes. Thanks, Google. Help help me out there. This Jean <laughs> uh, evil doer. So I have to cast it aside and return to Eloise Justine. <laughs> I just okay. I'm gonna read it out, but I'm not gonna change it now because I think this is good. So after our fight, Beatrice spreads rumors of ill repute, Ill repute about this Jean Bois evil doer. So I had to cast it aside like old clothing and return to Eloise Chastain. And then I put like my feelings on it are that bitch, but it sounds like I'm saying that bitch as Eloine, Eloise Chastain. <laughs> I mean Beatrice, but I'm not gonna change it because I quite like I quite like this badass attitude I've got going on. Um, which is good. All right, didn't have to check anything off. Great, great, great. All right, let's move on. Uh, Oh, we've got 33 minutes left, friends, so we'll see how much we get done. All right, D10. It's a six. Good so far. A D6. Ooh, that was an interesting roll, though, because it hit the other dice, and it went from a a one to a five. So we only move forward one one step. So we're on number 25. Your methods for acquiring victims are no longer effective. <laughs> what has changed? <laughs> Lose a resource and create a skill which describes your new feeding techniques. Super. Okay. Uh, let's look at the resources I've got again. <sighs> My collection of fine hats. <laughs> uh, I'm going to lose... Uh, well, I'm going to have to lose the servants, aren't I? That makes sense. God, my poor day dress with pockets has probably been through the mill at this point, um, I will say. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to lose the, ser- the servants at this point because that's that's just the way, the way it is. All right, let's strike them through. Goodbye, servants. Um, lose a resource and gain a skill that... Ret- <laughs> uh, gain a skill? I know. Self-sufficiency. <laughs> Self-sufficient... Um, I guess it's not really a skill that describes when you feed. Well, I guess it is in a way. New feeding technique. I don't know. We'll see. All right. I'll put. I'm gonna put self sufficient. Self. Weird. Self sufficient. Sorry. I'm trying to spell and hold books. Sufficient. No, oh, I know. I've not spelled that right. Google. Yes. Thank you. Always put it in, in sentence case. Oh yeah, I forgot I've got all these other skills. <laughs> so, I like, oh yeah, uh, self-sufficient. I take only what I need. Nice. Okay, 
so I've lost my servants, but I am now self-sufficient in my feeding skills. Uh, oh no, balls. I, mm. okay, so, oh, damn. So I need to put in how I'm self-sufficient now. But I've, I can't fill I can't fill my diary one anymore. So I'm gonna create a new new memory in the diary uh, to talk about the servants because I think I think that is important. Uh, yeah. Oh no, I've ruined it already. Servant, servants come back. Okay. Um, so I lose the servants in some way. Uh, So the servants are no longer cooperating <laughs> due to some sort of campaign of terror I've been demonstrating. So I started to pick, so I start to pick them off one by one. Uh, how do I feel about this? <sighs> to, to help me with my feed. I guess it's time to... Oh, mm. for a... no. Oh. <laughs> oh god, this is so I'm so bad at my puns. I'm sorry in advance. Okay, so the memory I've created is the servants are no longer cooperating to help me with my feed due to some sort of campaign of terror. I'll put that in quotation marks. Um, campaign of terror I have been demonstrating. So I start to pick them off one by one. I guess it's time to go for a continental breakfast over a full English. I don't know. I, I think it's basically I'm saying it's time to be more choosy and I think I will pick it myself rather than having it brought to me greasy and um, in fact, although that, you know, it's, it's nice to be, you know, nice to have a little guilty pleasure once in a while. All right. Uh, so we've got skill. We've lost the resource of the servants. Got the new skill of being self-sufficient uh, in my feeding techniques. All right, let's go. So we've got a D10. That's a five. And a D6. It's a four. Oh, move one. I'm going to... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I just read the top line. Okay. So I'm on page 26, we have... You accidentally create a vampire through sloppy feeding. Create an immortal character from an existing mortal character why do you not like them check uh, why do you not destroy them check a skill well i don't have any mortal characters that's really awkward because francine has, has been dead for a while what do i do about that let me look at my things am i allowed to create one i, I to be honest i did not expect maybe i need to create a character for this uh they might be da -da 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 -da. In addition, oh, in addition, create a new character if the structure include one, but none are available. There we go. Okay. So yeah, in addition, create a new character if a prompt instructs you to include one, but none are available. Thanks, Tim Hutchings. Okay. Uh, so I need to create a new immortal character. A new vampire. We will go with... Uh, na, na, na. Uh, oh, oh! I I know a good French name. I'll go for Tim Murphy. The um the uh, gentleman with kind eyes and a rather <laughs> amusing mus. Oh no! I can't spell mustache. No. Moustache, moustache. Yeah, take that. Um, and also a vampire that I created. 
And in the brackets, oops. Cool. Oh, the gentleman with a kind eye. Kind eyes. Okay, so I've created Timothy. Uh, I'm sure there's a way I can put like a little tick all over the E. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, okay, so I accidentally create. Oh, well, that's gonna go with uh, that one in the diary. So I am gonna create Timothy. I accidentally create a vampire through sloppy feeding. Created a mortal character. I've done. Why do you not destroy them? That's not how you spell Timothy at all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Where's the first? When he realized. Ah. Okay. Timothy was the first person who did not scream when he realised that his time had come. I respect that in a person. So, gave him all the time he needed. <laughs> I'm so mean. I love it. This game's awesome, by the way. Oh, I'm just creating chaos. Okay, so we've got Timothy, we've got Beatrice. They don't have last names, because I don't have time for last names. All right, D10. I think that's everything, yeah, D10. Oh, three, and then a D6. It's a three. Oh, so we stay on the same page. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, Timothy. <laughs> this immortal character lurks on the fringes of your existence. They become an embodiment of one of your least savoury checked skills. How do they act when your paths cross? What disturbing gift do they give you? Create a resource. Timothy, no! <laughs> oh no. Okay, so they've become the embodiment of one of my least favor least savoury, sorry, checked skills. Um, that's really awkward. So there's only two check skills I've got so far. Obviously, I had to get rid of proficient in the harpsichord. Man, could you imagine if he if he was the <laughs> if that was the least savory, um, least savory. Uh, I mean, as much as much as I would love for him to be really, really bloody charming, we know that's not true. We know he's going to be bloodthirsty. He's like he's. It's really awkward now. Because I've obviously got past this stage and Timothy has not. Oh, that's such a shame. Okay. Uh, how did they act when your paths crossed? What? Oh, no. Mm, I've got the idea that because I, I, I gave, I, I pitied him and gave him, the, gave him this chance. Or, or no, not even pitied him. I respected him. That's gone. <laughs> I think he thinks, oh, I bet he, oh, he probably does all the horrific, like, like, um, you know, in monster, uh, in the monster films, in vampire films, where they're like a master, ah, oh, like that, back to the king and all that sort of things. Like, ugh. okay, so Timothy, <laughs> nuisance, nuisance. Last time. <laughs> eh, half seas, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't spell halfsies, 
sorry, I've given up at this point. <laughs> so close to the end, we've got 20 minutes left. So the the uh, what I've done for sorry, I keep forgetting to do this. Um, in memory two in my diary, I have added the final thing about the creation of Timothy. Um, so Timothy has become somewhat of a nuisance and keeps wanting to hang out. <laughs> Um, last time he offered to go halvesies on his meal, but it was all finger food. There's just nothing professional about the man. Yuck. <laughs> oh no. Oh, but I get something, don't I? He gave me a gift. Oh, oh man. Mm, halvesies on his meal. Finger food. There'll be something. Uh, let's go for uh, resources. A dead man's ah dead man's pocket watch. You always have those uh, broken at the hour of broken um, and stopped and stopped at one one twenty four a.m. There. Okay. So what I've got out of it even though he offered to go halvesies on this meal and it was like, mm, no thanks. He would have given me the gift as well of a broken pocket watch from this rich person that he's kindly devoured in front of me. And it's broken at the time of his death. So, so I took the watch instead. The pocket watch instead. All right, so I'll read that again just so everyone's got it. So, Timothy has become somewhat of a nuisance and keeps wanting to hang out, in quotation marks. Last time, he offered to go halvesies on his meal, but it was all finger food, so I took the pocket watch instead. There's just nothing professional about the man. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> okay, um, right, let's do the rolly roll. So, d10. A five and a d6 is a four. So we move one to 27. Oh no. Okay. Wars rage throughout the region in which you reside. You withdraw, you withdraw into a hidden retreat waiting for them to pass. Lose a resource. Uh, I'm guessing with this one, I don't know. Cause like the servants, the servant prompt made sense to actually include an, um, experience of it it just talks to me I, I guess i need to include experience right okay friends i've got to lose one of three or four one of four things i lose my day dress with pockets my collection of fine hats my diary which is not happening because i like my diary or the dead man's pocket watch broken or stopped at uh 1 a.m actually it probably doesn't matter because it's gonna be one of those 24 hour watches it's 1 AM or PM? Man, was he was Timothy snacking? Like between lunch and dinner? Typical Timothy, honestly. Right. Um Oh, do I lose pockets? Do I finally lose my dress pockets after all this? <sighs> my collection of fine hats though. <laughs> Alright. I no I no, I I feel as much as I want to keep my hats, I feel I would lose them at this point. I probably would have had to rush and hide away, and I could only take certain things. So I always take my day dress with pockets, or a day dress with pockets. It probably isn't the same <laughs> dress with pockets by now. Probably needs a wash. All right, say goodbye to the fine hats. And they're gone. They're gone. All right, uh, let's. Uh, oh, that's the dress with pockets. I keep forgetting that's out there. Hmm. I am going to add. To I'm gonna add I'm gonna start adding to these ones I think because I the ones that are actually in my head because I think so I'm gonna add to the dress one so the second experience in memory three we're gonna go for um, my haste to escape the rages beating down from all sides, sides, several, <laughs> behind <laughs> my whole hat, whole collection, Wah! fine hats, fine hats, 
whole collection of fine hats <laughs> to in my haste to escape the rages of war beating down from all sides i have to leave behind my whole collection of hats to uh, no whole collection of hats uh devastating thank you google <laughs> needs must must to all concerned okay so in my haste to escape the rages of war beating down on all sides i have to leave behind my whole collection of fine hats a devastating blow to all concerned but needs must I don't know about you folk, but I definitely would be friends with Eloise. <laughs> She's so cool. Much cooler than me. Okay. Uh, yeah, loser is also lost the fine hats. Okay. D10. Ooh, that's a seven. That's good. All right. And a, uh, and a, sorry, a D6. Completely forgot what the name of it was then. Oh, no, that's a six on a D6. So I only move forward one again. Oh, no. So right, we're on to 28. That's, I've only progressed like one each time for the last couple of them. <sighs> a long dead mortal character returns. What do they want from you? How have they survived death? You only recognize them if you have a related memory. And check a skill. Ooh, a long dead mortal returns. What do they want? How did they survive death? So let's let's have a look. Who have we got? Oh no. I feel like it's very hard for Gabrielle to come back at this point. And Francine, like we we didn't care about Francine that much. Like she was there, wasn't important. <laughs> She's out of this narrative. So that means I think dear mama comes back but i have no memory of her <laughs> i got rid of that memory i think that oliver had something to do with it as well as i but i don't remember it was me that killed her uh, sorry uh, seeing what i get yeah i think that's that's what I'm going for. Nice. So yeah, I'm gonna make it so that. Oh, but where can I? Where can I put it? Uh Oh, aha! Memory one. All right, let's go for it. We have a long dead mortal return. So I, I'm guessing I need to bring her back then. Hang on. Let's un undo. Let us undo. Ooh, straight through. Okay, let's see if we can write this memory and then do do one more and then we might have to call it a day, friends. Uh, so, how ah, they survived death. What do they want from you? Ooh, I don't recognise a face though, do I? Ah, oops. Oh, shoot. Okay, okay, think, 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 I need to think. Uh... Well, I, I, let's, first off, we're going to move her from mortal to immortal. We'll put her next to Timothy. Sorry, Timothy. Uh, I, we're going to have to put her as a vampire. Sod it. A spawn. Yeah, it's, I, I think Timothy at this point is a vampire spawn as well. Not a proper vampire. Okay. Uh, let's go for... Yeah, we're just going to... We'll make a new memory in here. One, two, three. Oh, no! Why? <laughs> a woman claiming to be Lady Jen. Oh, I can't spell her name. Uh, Genevieve. Genevieve. Chess. Oh god, I can't even spell Genevieve at this point. Yes, that's what I meant. Thank you, Google. Uh, has sought me out and told me that 
she wants revenge for my impertinence imprudence imp impertinence is what i meant to say no my my uh frankly i'm gonna say unladylike manner again <laughs> i know i know what i mean impertinence is what i mean but ladylike manner and for firstly, hang on, uh, for firstly, my unlady, my frankly unlady, and secondly, for her death. Um, hang on, what did I say? How have they survived death? Death, and thirdly, for making her undead. What skills do I have? Sorry. Aha! I keep cool-headed. I keep cool-headed in this situation. <laughs> Tick. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use a skill. I'm gonna use my ability to keep my hair, my keep my head in the most dire situations and be cool-headed when dealing with this. Frank, frankly, I don't know who this is. It's uh, terrifying. Uh, making her undead. Uh, what would I say? Um, you only recognize me. I don't I check a skill. I have no memory of her, of her face. Is she telling us the truth? Is she telling me the truth? Question mark. All right, so how did they survive death? Yep, she's, I've made her undead. Dun, dun, dun. All right, unfortunately, we've run out of time. It's like seven minutes to go. Um, I'm gonna stop the stream there. Wow, we, we actually did quite a bit. We did this, like, I feel like I could do this for hours. This has been an amazing thing. And we've not, we only lost one memory after all that. Maybe I'm just, Maybe I'm just not very good at this game. I don't know. Um, oh, I've lost my notes by not sharing. But yeah, I just want to do a quick thing. Um, I want to thank Charlotte for helping me out with the, the text stuff and being in the comments stuff. Please, please, please give a big thanks to Charlotte in the comments. Uh, I want to thank Third Space Gaming. Again, the only people I found in the UK that stock a thousand year old vampire. So go check them out if you want your own copy. Um, and they're very lovely. They've got their own Discord. So I highly recommend ch uh, chatting to that. Um, they're in the Northwest, which is where I'm from. Uh, Next thing I want to I want to thank Tim Hutchings, the actual designer of Thousand Year Old Vampire. Like um, one thing I've noticed in lockdown is that a lot more people are playing solo RPGs, and I know I'm very late to the game, I'm very late to the party on this. Um, but I've really enjoyed this. I think I'm definitely going to continue this after the stream and maybe finish it off, and then we'll put it out in podcast form. We'll see. Um, of course, thanks to Dragon Meat and and Podcast Zone for having me to finish out this wonderful day of of uh, podcasts and RPGs and everything. I've had I've been on nearly everything, I think, um, but I really really appreciate what they do. So big up john dodd and his excellent team uh, obviously mira who's run the podcast zone stuff thank you so so much um and i want to thank you for staying with me and like helping me play this really silly game and me making myself a badass vampire who gives no shits about anyone <laughs> and it's all going to end in tears and we only i think we only got into a little part of it so uh finally i want to say thank you Oh, thank you. I finally want to say I'm just going to plug all the things I'm at. So obviously this is What Am I Rolling, a twice monthly RPG one-shot podcast. Uh, we've done games such as uh, obviously D&D, &D, that's the big one really, but we've done lots of Grant Howard one-page one-shots. We've done loads of those. Call of Cthulhu, uh, Pathfinder, uh, Quill, lots of solo sort of role-playing games. I did one called Twain, which is about you meeting your twin or not meeting your twin after a time of being apart. Um, and I also, I've just started, in, well, just started six months ago i launched the dms book club a weekly book club type uh, podcast where we uh, talk about D, D and how we can implement it into our campaigns both those podcasts so the what am i rolling podcast and the dms book club you can find wherever you listen to podcasts um so just type them in and you'll see they're very distinctive logos and stuff i think really that's it from me and i'm gonna probably end the stream a little bit early if that's okay with everyone uh, thank you so so much for being here and don't have nightmares uh, about being vampires.
what will happen to our badass French feminist vampire Eloise Chastain? Will she make do and make amends for all of her past grievances? Yes, I know, unlikely, but hey, you never know. Find out next time on What Am I Rolling? The What Am I Rolling podcast was created, recorded, and edited by me, Fiona Howard. This episode's player was Fiona Howard. This episode's RPG was Thousand Year Old Vampire, a solo, lonely RPG by Tim Hutchings. You can find out more about Thousand Year Old Vampire and other work by Tim Hutchings on the official website. That's www.thousandyearoldvampire.com. The theme music was 8 Bit March by Twin Musicon of twinmusicon.org, licensed under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. If you want to find out more about the podcast, check out the website. That's www.wairpodcast.com. Fancy getting in touch? Email the podcast at whatamirollingpodcast at gmail.com. Finally, follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at wair underscore podcast for the latest news on upcoming episodes. And remember, adventurers need not apply. <laughs>